Well, we got the legendary Rodney Gallagher here today. What's going on, bro? Yo, what's good? What's good? Yo, we're super excited to have you, bro. You know, we as Fayette County people kind of understand your journey, but we're trying to put a spotlight on you to our fashion, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, our fashion group mm -hmm. of people. So let's start from the beginning, like the early stuff. So I know like AAU played a big role mm -hmm. in your trajectory. So do you mind like breaking that down? Yeah, so we started back in like, I say, well, fourth grade, I was playing with a hoop team in West Virginia. Then uh, like going into my fifth grade year, we had played a tournament against them. And uh, I did really good. So uh, they asked me, you know, after the tournament and stuff, if I would be open for a, a tryout. So um, I went to the tryout, I did pretty good. And they said I was good enough to play on the team. So yeah, we went from there. And I remember my first tournament was in uh, Birmingham, uh, Alabama. And um, I think it was like the first two games I was getting summits and uh, they just wanted to try a new lineup and see how it went. So I started a game and I ended up like popping off. So from there, I mean, it just really took off, started to get my name out there. And we were just going into all these big tournaments and playing against these big time, you know, young players. And uh, I was just doing really good. And like I said, just get my name out there. So that's how my basketball uh, career got started. Okay. Yeah, man. Like, um, I remember I was I was at work at the time and some girl was telling me like, yeah, you know, Bronny was in was in Union Town. I'm yeah. like, I'm thinking she's capping. I'm like, man, you cap as heck. Like, <laughs> Bronny. And then like I seen like what happened and how it mm -hmm. unfolded. And I was like, wow, that's legendary for yeah. real. Um, so on out of that squad. So like, did you and Mikey play at the same time or like was that two different like generations? Yeah, we played. Uh, we played seventh grade year and we played a little bit of the eighth grade year, I believe. <laughs> so yeah, we played. We played on the same team and we. Uh, we won the national championship together in seventh grade. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, given the the accolades that you have in basketball, like, was it 2,000 points, um, the WHIP championships, mm. you got two of those. Um, I think the, like, a lot of people want to know, like, why football over basketball? Yeah, for sure. Um, it was definitely a better opportunity, you know, like, with basketball nowadays, like people that play my position are like six five, six four. Yeah. So like, mm -hmm. a lot of these scouts and these college teams like to see you know like bigger guards and stuff now. Mm -hmm. So my recruitment kind of went down my junior and senior year just because of my size. Mm -hmm. So um, like a lot of my big time offers that I had, they were kind of second guessing them because you know they knew football uh, mm -hmm. was really my thing also. So mm -hmm. it was really just a business decision. So yeah, I took the football route. We're gonna keep it real. Like we're from town. I, I know a lot of youngers that crashed out. Like you yeah. know what I mean. That chose a different way, right? Yeah. But like you never seemed interested. Like you could watch some kids. And you could see like not nah, interested in the you know what I mean mm -hmm. in the streets or some other things. But like bro, you had laser focus. Yeah. Like you had a focus above your age, in my mm -hmm. opinion. You know. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, what what do you think help help you stay focused like that? Like what was your uh, motivation? Yeah, well, I think it was definitely, like, you know, my best friends and stuff because we started sports at five years old and we played, like, every sport with each other. So I think it was that, and I wanted to continue to do that, you know, to get all the way to the college level. So that was a big part of it. And also my family, you know, keeping my head on because they knew what was going on, you know, in town and in the streets. And I saw a lot of my, uh, you know, buddies at a young age that, you know, chose the, the different route. Mm -hmm. So that was just something I didn't want to be a part of. And, you know, I just wanted to make a change around here because, uh, you know, we didn't really have a role model like that growing up. Facts. Like, this is just me talking. I feel like, you know, a lot of people have these uh, questions on, like, how we can make a change in, in like, you know, the, the youth and, and the, in the direction of things. And for me, I feel like it's people like you, right? Like, I feel like when people, when young people see someone that, like, is getting, you know, is accomplishing things and, and like is receiving like attention and like, you know, all from positive things. I think that makes them want to do that more, right? Like right. if you still fly, like you're fly, mm -hmm. right? But you're not like toting the pole. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's like, yo, I don't have to tote the pole to like really kind of yeah. get the same kind of attention. So I feel like the change starts in examples in uh, leadership like yourself. So right. um, again, I commend you on that. Appreciate it. Um, so let me ask you this. I see you uh, been carrying the number two for a while. Mm -hmm. So what's what's the significance behind that number? Yeah, it was uh, a family uh, a family number, and my dad had twenty four, my mom had forty two, then her uh, my aunt Tony's brother had two, and all his kids wore it. 
So I just felt like, you know, if the two. grandkids is wearing it, I feel like I need to wear it. So two has always been in the family, so I just carried it on. That's fire. Like, that's another good, um, like, little pivot, right? Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, rest in peace to your mom, mm -hmm. right? Like, um, I think, like, she, I don't think I know she's very proud of you. Mm -hmm. um, she was a beast. Yeah, like, my, my my people went to school with her because everybody talks about your yeah. pops, right? They'd be yeah. like, yeah, you know, his dad's the, mm -hmm. the guy, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. But they're like, nah, his mom was the yeah. truth nice. for real. Yeah, she's nice. <laughs> It yeah, she scored a band in, in high school. So yeah, like, right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. she had. And was it track or something as well? Uh, what else? What else? She, she ran track. She ran, she ran track, track at a younger age. At a younger age, yeah. yeah she all loved, around. She athlete. loved softball too, though. She's she was good at softball too. Yeah. yeah see, so that's fire, bro. Mm -hmm. So I lost my mom like almost three years ago. Mm -hmm. How do you f the, like? Did that contribute to your motivation? Like, you know, oh, I'm yeah. not trying to ask a leading question, but yeah. is that something that was a driving factor? Yeah, for sure. Just like you know, with her like growing up and all the memories and stuff, and I had like. So going back to like my flag football days and stuff, like her, you know, being in the stands and just cheering me on and her like pushing me every day. Also mm -hmm. with my dad, just knowing like I knew she wasn't there, but she's there at the same time. So like I always wanted to, you know, go harder just because I know that's what uh, she would want me to do. Facts. Fire. Fire. We'll, we'll kind of stay in the sports realm a mm -hmm. little bit more. So you played it like, so you hooped. Um, I watched you play QB. Right now, you're um, a wide receiver. Like, mm -hmm. is there a particular reason behind that position? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, going into college, uh, just like, you know, where my size is at, um, it was definitely, you know, a change. And that my college coach just felt me most comfortable playing that position. So, yeah. So, in college, like, the biggest thing with wide receiver is, is, like, technique and your consistency. So, like, you know, I've been working on that all year. And, like, this is my first year actually playing that uh that position because like you said I've been playing quarterback all my life especially all through high school mm -hmm. so you know as the year went you know I started to get better better and better and I started my first game you know last game that we just recently played mm -hmm. so you know I'm gonna continue to work all offseason then next year you know things are gonna turn up for me yeah it seems like um you're I see a common trait in a lot of like good athletes right like they usually are multifaceted. they're they're you know you almost can adapt to any kind of right. game and like position. So it mm -hmm. seems like you have the trait right. that most successful people have. Um, now, obviously, um, I remember watching you at the, uh, it was the All American game. Mm -hmm. I think that was like the first time I watched you on yeah. like national TV. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, how was that moment, bro? It like, was unreal. Um, it was just like the environment and, uh, you know, just like coming out of the tunnel, like before the game started. And we did like, the national anthem and all that stuff, and this girl that sang, like, it was just crazy. Like, that was my first time being in, like, a huge moment in football like that, and uh, just playing in a big-time stadium like that and playing with big-time players. So it was a great experience for me, and that was kind of like the, you know, the start of my actual football journey for right. going into the college and stuff. So would you, so we asked Jelani, we was like, hey, like, what was the moment you felt like, because obviously there's still work to do, right? Mm -hmm. There's, you know, your journey is just starting. But, like, what was the moment that, like, you realize, like, man, I'm really, like, doing it now. Was that yeah. that moment, or was there another moment that you might? I think, yeah, that was one of the biggest moments. But I think, like, my biggest moment to realize, like, I'm supposed to be where I'm, like, you know where I am, like, was probably last game. Like, um, you know, seeing myself on, like, the Jumbo Charm before the game started and all that, and uh, just, you know, running onto the field for the first drive. So, like, it was just a surreal moment and just, you know, playing in the NFL stadium. <laughs> All right. Why WVU? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, down my recruitment, I had, I think, seven or eight schools. Um, but WVU was definitely the best fit for me, for my future. Um, you know, I had a chance to play, you know, right away. And I feel like they could develop me the best as possible in the position I was playing. Uh, just because, you know, I was coming into a different position. So I feel like I was most comfortable there doing it there. Um, the coaching staff, uh, I love them to death. They're very good, too me and you know my family and um, I think just like the fan base just because like we're mm -hmm. the professional team in West Virginia since they don't have one so like if you contribute there there's a chance to get a bag there so like that was another thing and uh, so yeah I just think all around it had everything for me. That was actually a very uh, dope perspective right because I, I didn't even think about it like that like <clears throat> my girl went to WVU and mm -hmm. um, like bro WVU like yeah like they have no 
the uh, national football team. So That's it is saying. mountain. You're yeah. Like yeah. So like it's almost like baby NFL. Like you like you're yeah. like yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. Especially the crowd that we had last game. Like you can tell. Like they it, it was treated like an NFL game. Like how many fans we had travel. Like there was barely any North Carolina fans there, and we were in North Carolina. It was crazy. Like, <laughs> it was all blue and gold. It was not. <laughs> yeah, it was not. Yeah, I got a couple questions, man. Um, you know, uh, first off, bro, uh, you know, major congratulations on all your success, bro. I appreciate you know what I'm saying? It. We've always been trying to push this town further, mm -hmm. and you've been big in that, bro, mm -hmm. you know, for your generation, you know. Mm -hmm. I first uh, met you at a wedding, you mm -hmm. know. And I didn't, I didn't know how to, you know, how you, you know what I mean? I, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I seen you, like, you know, dancing, having yeah. fun, talking yeah. to your aunts and uncles. And <laughs> I was like, you know, that's a really good, humble kid. Yeah. You know what I mean, bro? And because, you know, bro, a lot of people talk, bro. And it's, you know, sometimes it's not all love. You know, people yeah. always have something yeah. to say. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I love being able to, like, nah, man, I, I met the kid, bro. Yeah. Like, he's him. You know, yeah. he's a genuine, good yeah. kid. You know what I mean? So um, love seeing that, you know. Yeah. The stuff you was doing with Swing Man. Yeah. That's what I want to know. I want to kind of get into Swing Man because, you know, I'm a videographer. You know, right. I got into sports last year, mm -hmm. and y'all were already, you know, pioneers at it. So right. I was just watching what y'all were doing, and, mm -hmm. you know, Swing Man would you know, show love. And, you know, so did you – how did that – how did that relationship – you know, kind of like begin, you know, is yeah. that, were you working with other videographers smart enough to know like, hey, I need some hype videos and mixtapes, or did you and Swing Man kind of say like, yo, this is what we're going to do? Yeah, so um, I believe it was my going into, what do you think, sixth, year, sixth grade year, seventh grade year? Somewhere. Yeah, so it was one of the two years, and so my boy CK, uh, we had a workout, and him and CK, Chris, uh, uh, Christian Kazmarski, yeah, yeah, and they were roommates Chris, in college, yeah. so when Logan first started the videoing, he came to one of our workouts and I met him from there and he just continued to get better and better as we were working out all through that process. So I was like, like you said, like I kind of wanted the guy that had all my stuff like in the background of me, just like what's going on in my life and stuff. So like he has, you know, all that type of stuff if, you know, if anybody wants it and everything. So uh, then we just beca uh, became like really good friends and we bonded very well. So. I just wanted a type of guy like that in my corner, and he just continued to get better and better. And it was someone that I trusted, you know, with uh, all the like clips and videos that he had of me in the pictures and stuff. And so he was the guy I kind of like, you know, took under my wing, and we did big, big things together. And you know, we've helped both each other out. Yeah, and no, I'm sure I, I saw him shoot some stuff with the penguins. Yeah, that look crazy. That, that yeah. stuff is looking crazy. Yeah. You know? So he's doing very good for himself, and you know, he's getting out there. And it's just only going to get bigger and bigger for him. So Yeah, no, that's fire, bro. That's fire, bro. Um, I got another question. Um, you know, I know you have a lot of cousins mm -hmm. and family that can hoop, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, I'm, I went to Brownsville, so, you know, like yeah. George Lemon and them yeah. and, you know, Juan and De'Aaron yeah. and them, you know, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, who do you think is, like, one of the nicest ones? Or, like, you know, maybe it's a couple of them, maybe yeah. it's all of them, but, like, who really inspired you when you was a young and that was like, yo, yeah. nah, he balling. I got to, you know what I mean? Yeah, so um, really the one coming up that, like, was really, really putting the work in with me was obviously my dad, but like cousins wise and stuff was uh, Jawan. Like Jawan really helped me a ton. Like that's probably one of the best basketball players like I've ever seen in my bro, life. Bro, me like, too, bro. Like, me too, bro. I saw him <laughs> when I was young. I, I saw him at Walmart and it was like Michael Jordan, bro. Like, I swear. Bro, I, I swear yeah. to God, I saw him at, uh, I saw him uh, play at the old Uniontown um, uh, court, right? Yeah. And it was like LA Uniontown. I was a kid and I saw him. He made like 33s in a row, bro. Yeah, I was bro. like, I never yeah, seen he, something like this, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was unreal. He, I mean, he can legit shoot from everywhere on the court. So like, yeah, yeah. he was always my inspiration. He pushed me like even the days I didn't want to do anything. Like he always came and got me, and we would go to BF, we'd go to Lafayette, we'd go to Penn State Fair. It didn't matter where it was, mm -hmm. and um, he was just always coaching me and stuff like that. And even playing in the back of my house, like on the hoop there, we would always train back there. Him and uh, Deere is also a big. Uh, mm -hmm factor in that too because even when Jawan couldn't do it De'Aaron would pick me up and mm -hmm. do it so like those two dudes uh, helped me a ton in my career and that's real man shout out to them for sure bro mm -hmm. uh, one of the accolades that you have that is super fire um, is you were the first person in Pennsylvania to get a high school NIL deal yeah. like um, so how how did that feel right and then just give me a general perspective of like how you feel about NIL deals yeah. So yeah, it felt great. Uh, we've been pushing, like when that first came out, we were always trying to push it because we've seen other states doing it and stuff. And we felt like that was needed in Pennsylvania. So um, a guy named Jordan Rooney did a great job by pushing that and, you know, trying to get it out there and everything. So 
shout out to him for doing that and me and him work together to do a big time partnership with uh, the pavement group out in Pittsburgh. And also, um, we still have a great relationship. My sister just recently got a job with them out there. Uh, so yeah, it's a big time partnership with them. So shout out to Brian for that. And uh, I think NIL is definitely, you know, a great thing. Cause um, I mean, over these years, like if you look at like people like Reggie Bush, Terrell mm -hmm. Pryor, like imagine if yeah. they had yeah. NIL. Yeah, like, TP bro. Oh, and those man. dudes would have never, they would have never gotten in trouble if NIL was a thing. So right. uh, I just always felt like that was needed. And like big time players that, you know, the college teams and stuff are making millions and we're not getting a penny off of it. So like, I feel like that was a big time, you know, experience and, and a big time get for, you know, these players because, you know, we can make some money off our name for making noise. Yeah, nah, fire, fire. All right, so with that being said, um, you know, we have an audience of uh, fashion people and then also we have an um, a audience of young athletes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody and they was telling me how they kind of marketed themselves. Um, so maybe a two-part question. Do you feel like the 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 mixed tapes and the social media um, helps whenever you're, you know, you're trying to get these partnerships or deals or schools? Like, do do you feel yeah. that way? I feel I, I definitely feel that way because like, you know, everybody knows like social media is like huge nowadays, and like that's kind of how you get your name out there. So I feel like you know. So you go to the store and you buy so and so, and like you want to post on Instagram, mm -hmm. and you tag them. Like that could be a chance, especially if you have a following. That could be a chance to you know get like an IL deal right there. So like, I feel like that's a big thing um, with the you know all these partnerships and big businesses. That's how they get athletes on board. Do you have any advice or hacks? Like so, from the outside looking in, I feel like the first thing that I would assume is like you know keeping the brand clean right but like do you have any advice for any of the youngest that's watching this that's like yo man like you know i'm maybe not getting as much coverage or whatever like how can how can they increase their odds of um of succeeding you know what i mean yeah um yeah definitely if they're not getting the you know the praise and the, you know the hype right now just put your head down to work and that's the only thing i can really tell you because you know the work is gonna you know it's gonna talk and it's gonna pay itself off at the end of the day, cause you know if you don't got what you need right now, you continue to put in the work and stuff. Like when you go out there and get that opportunity, you take advantage of it, then boom, there it is. So I feel like that's the biggest, the biggest need for these young athletes nowadays, cause they feel like they just already deserve it and they didn't put no time into it. So mm -hmm. I feel like that's that's what I, my advice would be: just put your head down, and when you get that opportunity, take advantage of it. Then you know things will go on from there. Fire. Okay. So we're going to get into some more casual things now. This is the part we like to call a countdown, just some like random fun yeah, stuff. Up. So I'll start with one. This is my favorite one because I'm a tweak. I ain't going to lie. Do you believe in aliens? Do I believe in aliens? <laughs> uh, I mean, maybe to a certain point. I don't, <laughs> I don't really, I don't really know. Like, it'd be weird. Like some things I do be seeing sometimes be like, wait, like for uh -huh. real? Like, uh -huh. especially on TikTok, you know, yeah. I mean, like, some conspiracy theories and stuff be nah. so like. Sometimes I really do believe those things are real. So okay, bet. Nah, I only laugh so hard because our last our last guest was like, "Man, you get on TikTok, you get on that rabbit hole, man. Nah, you see this alien yeah, stuff." Yeah. Me too, bro. I got yeah. sucked into the TikTok black hole of aliens, and um, I started seeing some of these congressional hearings where they're coming out saying they exist and stuff. Yeah. It's like wow, it's, it's kind of yeah. wild. Nah, you gotta be tapped in. Uh, yeah. You gotta be you tapped. Watching this? Yeah. Yeah. watching this, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, Luke, you guys should get man. Um. You know, normally I just ask a simple question, but you know, I've seen you before in the locker room turning up to like Steve Lacey. Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen you turning up to rap music, so yeah. obviously you have a wide range of, you right. know, music you listen to. Like, yeah. what do you really go to? What's your go to music? Is it so, yeah, right, artist, song, yeah. whatever, you know? Yeah, right now, my go to artist is probably OT7 Kwani right now. I told yeah. you, bro. I told you you're Kwani, man. Kwani. Come on, oh, man. Yeah, he yeah. wouldn't know if you were a Swifty. <laughs> yeah. Rumo yeah, wouldn't know. The question, that's the next question, man. Question, man. My bad, bro. Or, yeah. here, hold on. Ask the question. I told, but I. I was like, I'm gonna ask him he's a Kwani, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. <laughs> nah, so know, look, you know what I mean? yeah. So listen, man. I have, all right, Lucas, so my thunder, dog. So you a, are you a Swifty, dog? Nah, I ain't no Swifty. Nah, you ain't no Swifty. Nah. All right, listen. Nah, because nah, there'll be a couple Swifties. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> listen, man, the Taylor Swift thing is real. I, I'll it be is real, though. It I don't is hate on her. Yeah. I don't hate her. I just, I'm not into her music. But I don't hate on her, though. She's, she's making tons of noise. And, yeah, and facts. Bill, probably billion dollars almost. Yeah. Yeah, bro. She she's setting the standard. Yeah, and, um, she is. 
had me cracking up because of my daughter, man. She uh she wanted me to ask you that. Pixie, yeah. that's for Pixie. Yeah, all right. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So then the next thing is uh what's your favorite sneaker? My favorite sneaker? it's uh, a good question. Like I'm really into like all types of Jordans, like the, mm -hmm. the ones, the threes, the fours, the elevens, the twelves. So I love I love Jordans. Um I love off whites, mm -hmm. any type really. Um Bape, I'm real into bait. I like Yeezy, so I'm kind of like all around. All around. Like, I, I like I like everything. I'm a, I'm a designer guy. I like designer, but you know sometimes I try to get too crazy, so like, I gotta, <laughs> I, gotta chill. Like, I gotta know what my standards are uh, before I buy it. So. Yeah, nah, that's a fact, bro. Yeah. I had to like limit myself to accessories only, yeah. bro, because it gets it gets a little out of control. Yeah, it gets a little crazy sometimes. So. Okay, so that that's all I had. Um, Tizo, you got anything for us, boss? One last question before the battery dies. Luca, any more questions? Um, you have any shout outs, bro? You want to shout anybody out, bro? You know, from the yeah. town, West oh, yeah. V, uh, worldwide, because I know you worldwide. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, bro? No, shout out to you guys, you know, get me on here. Shout out to Cash Cow. You know, I'm excited to see what y'all. Uh, with the future, and you know, I'm excited. Maybe you know, you never know in the future we could do some. So I'm excited yeah, about yeah. that. Sure, that's love, bro. Yeah, shout love. out to obviously the Union Town, my family, my friends, all that. So yeah. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, and you was one of the first ones through diversity on out here, bro. Yeah. Piped yeah. it up, bro. Yeah. Little kids yeah. walking past was like, yeah. Rodney, where's that? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So no, we we appreciate you too, bro. For yeah. real. sure, for sure. Man, yep. Appreciate. All right, thank all right. You. All right that's it.